You know, my dad was talking to me just a few moments ago about how Walmart started. And that guy, man, he started with that one store and he worked it and he worked it and look at it today. Now, those are the national chains I love. J.C. Penney, who I've worked with and had a great relationship with J.C. Penney's back in the 90s when we did our TV show. Another American story. Do you know that Mr. Penny of J.C. Penney's, do you know that he used to give away 50% of his income to charities? Remarkable. My whole life, I have believed in small businesses. My dad was a realtor and there's no smaller type, I don't mean small in size, but I mean no more of a small business than being a realtor. You do everything. I mean you got to do your paperwork, you got to you know solicit business. You, my dad was a marketing genius as a matter of fact. I'll tell you a quick little story. When I was a kid my dad would have me and my brothers get up in late at night and we would drive over in real estate they farm tracks you've heard of that before so there's you know the such and such track in this neighborhood and two other tracks in that neighborhood so my dad focused on three or four tracks that he marketed to and he focused only on those tracks primarily and in each one of those tracks he sent out a newsletter that I watched him literally literally do with rub on letters you know the stencils I mean he this is before computers and you know instantaneous fonts he would literally get out there and produce a quality publication that he sent out uh, I can't remember what he called it but his slogan was J Hare hops to it and he had a rabbit and that slogan on t-shirts and Everyone in these three or four tract areas and the whole community, as a matter of fact, knew him. And so we would get up the night before Easter and go all over these tracks and we would duct tape uh, little plastic Easter eggs under mailboxes and we'd hide them in the park in the corner of this or all over these tracks. He planted these plastic Easter eggs. Each one of the eggs had a slip in it and would tell you what you won. And at the real estate office, it looked like Santa's workshop. He had bicycles in there and, you know, games and, oh, I mean, you name it. They went on a shopping frenzy, my, my mom and my dad did. And these gifts were all over the real estate office. So he sent out a newsletter and he tells everybody in the track on Easter morning, you know, join Jay Hare's Easter egg hunt and here's what you can win. So he would give clues on the newsletter and it would say, um, every day at three and five, the mailman comes to this spot. Well, it's a mailbox. So people would run around, look under the mailbox and they'd, you know, they'd get the egg, open it up and say, you want a bike or you want this. And they'd run over to the real estate office and they would come back and forth. I mean, someone would win something, they'd get the thing, run back, come back and win something else. And they're standing at my dad like, I got it, I got it. <laughs> Genius. And everybody in his tracks knew who he was. He made, it, and the key to what he did is what's called synergy. Notice how he used the newsletter in conjunction with a giveaway game in conjunction with getting them to the office. So it really had three components. You have the newsletter that's marketing, telling people about it, interacting by giving clues, and he had these clue sheets that he included, or you could pick up a clue sheet at the real estate office. Then you would run around your neighborhood and find these eggs, and the egg with the prize listed in it would draw you to the office. So guess how many moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas my dad met while standing in a bunny costume. That's right, a bunny costume. <laughs> I don't know if we did it every year, but I was little bunny and he was big bunny at least one year. And our bunny costume consisted of long underwear. <laughs> it was a hoot. But that's synergy, using that consistent newsletter that he put out every month without fail. I'm not kidding. I watched him and it was a work of art. It was a really nice piece. And then he sent that, uh, you know, had that out doing its work. That would draw people to the game and they'd go all over the neighborhood and that game would then draw people to the actual real estate office. Genius, that's synergy. When you get all these components working together to create a, a better good or a greater good. 
And so, you know, marketing and advertising has been something I didn't really set out to pursue, but I paid attention. I was thoroughly intrigued by the newsletters that he used to produce. And then guess who had to pass them out? Me and my brothers, <laughs> my sister a little bit. Uh, but we would go every month without fail, door to door, dogs barking. It was the typical mailman kind of thing. <laughs> Thing. And we'd, you know, don't put them in the screen. My dad was very, very particular. Do not put them in the screen where they slide down in the middle. People get mad at me. And <laughs> but if you can't put it in a right place on the door, then slip it one corner underneath the welcome mat and leave it sitting. <laughs> he had all these rules. And, you know, his little team of delivery boys went out and delivered these things every month. And we'd get in the van or the car and drop off one of my brothers on one street and the other one and my mom would sometimes coordinate say you go there you go there and the two of you will meet in the middle <laughs> you know we're, we're almost done all right <laughs> but I I was around marketing and my dad had a great character a rabbit character that he used kinda not Bugs Bunny but a tall slender rabbit with a tuxedo on and uh, he had these t-shirts, J-Hair, and pot holders. All the women loved pot holders. So he had these J-Hair hops to it, pot holders and t-shirts. And he really created synergy uh, and people knew J-Hair and that he hops to it and gets the job done, which is actually the truth. So uh, that marketing climate was around my life growing up and I didn't really set out. I When I started doing birthday parties, it started out as a referral business. Somebody asked me to do a party, the very first one. I did it. Then I was recommended to a couple others because all the kids at, at that birthday party had other birthday parties. But I said, oh, I'll take a lesson from dad. And I went out door to door, made my own flyer, and knocked door to door. And not, not knocked, I went door to door and passed the flyers out and got even more business. But um, I remember when I was 16 years old, the church I went to is called Melody Land Christian Center across from Disneyland. And they were going through some tough times and they hadn't really done a big musical. They'd missed a couple of them. And for years, Melody Land across the street from Disneyland was known for these spectacular musicals. So I went into the pastor. This is really my first venture in advertising. And I went into the pastor and I said, you know, could you give me a Sunday night and a $5,000 budget and I'll do a musical slash concert and fill the place up? And with, you know, the best heart, he laughed at me. <laughs> it's not a good thing when your pastor laughs at you. He said, David, do you know how much our musicals cost? They cost tens of thousands of dollars. And I said, I'm telling you $5,000 a Sunday night and I'll fill the place up. Well, he agreed and I got $5,000 worth of expenses with band and this and that and the other thing. And But what I did is I went to several area businesses and actually they were large companies. Uh, I went to some Christian artists who had performed at Melody Land and said, look, you know, we've had some tough years, you've benefited. Would you come at just a basic little mini honorarium just to cover your kind of expenses? And it was a couple hundred apiece for artists that used to get five and $10,000 a performance. And they agreed. One of them was Steve Archer, Grammy Award winner. Another one, an incredible gospel singer. Look her up online. She passed away some years ago. A dear, dear friend of mine, Danny Bell Hall, who sang with the great Andre Crouch. And if you've ever heard the song, um, Soon and Very Soon, Danny Bell is the one in the original recording that just does this, uh, I mean, just a voice. So look her up. She's worth checking out. Um, but I got these artists to come in at a reduced rate and then I went to Continental Airlines and I said hey I'm at Melody Land across the street from Disneyland and guess what they paid the airfare for Danny Bell Hall to come didn't charge us a dime they just wanted a recognition in the bulletin there's my first ad then I went to the Marriott Hotel right there in Anaheim and I did the same thing I said look I lived out of kind of several miles away in a place called Corona California so I wanted a hotel room the night of and the night after the musical they agreed and the guests that were singing needed a room so I think I got three or four rooms from the Marriott for free just mention them in the program and what was the other one then I was such a novice I didn't know all the hot prop shops in Hollywood to go to I knew a few of them but I wanted a chandelier hanging above a piano in this one scene. And I went to a company called Halley Specs. 
and the guy who ran the place says pick out the one you want to use and I picked out a doozy. I don't know what it was worth but it was thousands of dollars. It was a monstrosity of a chandelier and it was gorgeous. It had these real crystal pieces hanging from it. He hands me a bag and he says, you know what this is? I said no. He goes, this is your replacement crystals because some of these might fall off but that's your limit. Anything else you pay for and I was like alrighty then. <laughs> So, me and my friend loaded it in a rider truck and suspended it. He uh, held it in place while we drove the few miles, just a mile or two from the venue. And uh, that is really how I did my first production. The place was packed and it led to other opportunities. And so I then went and started um, a radio show and realized a lot of small businesses that cater to families are pinned in to print flyers they can print up and some newspaper but they couldn't afford radio and so I created a radio program that made it affordable for these small business people and just did incredibly well had many many return clients America's television network fills a niche that nobody else is filling in two ways one, we offer a great product to the businesses and the advertisers, and two, it becomes a great feature for you, the viewer. You know, everybody's talking about Yelp and Angie's List and, you know, YP and all these different things that you can go to and see people, but what is the best way to meet someone? Well, the best way is if you're willing to walk into a store and shake the owner's hand. But sometimes people say, you know, I don't know if I want to go over there, and I don't know. Television is the next best thing and in some cases better because you're able to be introduced to a great business. You, the viewer, have all the control. You can sit there and kind of pick it apart and see what you like, check out what you don't like, and make a determination without any commitment. You just get to watch this great business and then, in the case of our network, I believe you'll say, hey, this is a fantastic company. Why? because we use that showcase and rather than do a buy now three you know three dollars off and five this and that blah 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 uh-uh what we do is we present gracefully the business to you and this is an awesome thing for local businesses do you know how many local businesses want to be the next Walmart but the difference between Sam Walton and Walmart is the day we live in People in the big money arena have figured out how to make the, the franchises, have figured out how to make the IPOs, have figured out how to get venture capital. And there are thousands upon thousands of small to medium businesses and growing corporations that are somewhat locked in and trying to stretch their business model. And it's hard to do. Let me give you an example. In Southern California, in the exact market where we broadcast, the newspaper there, the circulation in the same area that we cover, reaches 180,000 subscribers or newspapers in circulation. I should say circulation, I'm thinking cable. 180,000 newspapers in circulation in the exact same area where we reach a quarter of a million households and about three quarters of a million people. The newspaper charges for a small business card size ad. This size right here. That ad will cost you, if you're a small business owner, $500 a week, one time a week. 500 bucks. So the circulation is 180,000 and people do not read, some people do, but by and large you've got people that want the sports section, people that want the classifieds, and so that person doesn't even know how many people are actually getting to view that, that ad. That little tiny ad right there costs a business $2,000 a month minimum. That is expensive. You figure that out? What is that? That's $24,000 a year. Now I was helping my brother who owns a small business, very successful in his furniture business, and I was helping him with marketing and this was before I was uh, with America's Television Network and a Time Warner rep came in and the package that she offered my brother was twenty thousand dollars for a few months twenty thousand dollars here's the reality 
advertisers that are small, independent, and growing, they can spend money with you, but they've got to make it work over the course of their budget year. So you can't just come into a small business if you have ethics and just say, hey, you know, let me run you a lot and get out of the way and you give me the check and I'll be gone and you'll be finished. You got to stick with them. So we have a campaign that includes television, internet, uh, search engines, um, and all of that. And they can run for however many months they want to run. They get so much inventory, we make a recommendation. But we continue to market them through the web platform because they were featured on the network. So we have some advertisers that have continued with us all year long. Some are seasonal. Some of them have a specific budget. But they get a year's worth of marketing, all things included, for a very reasonable price. And uh, that's what we're committed to, is helping the local business. Now we're doing it on a national level. I have talked today with a wonderful company, a lady who's, who's growing her business, and the opportunity to reach a national television audience of eight and a half million people within a price point that she can manage is a dream come true for her and many businesses like that. That's our commitment. The world has changed from when J.C. Penney started, from when Sam Walton started Walmart. It's changed. Back then, it was elbow grease, word of mouth, a little bit of marketing if you got the money to spare. But look at how much information is out there. And let me tell you something about the internet. Many, many people, uh, back when the internet, I'll say about 10 years ago, a lot of businesses where I remember I was doing something and every business I encountered was like, well, we do search optimization. And all the businesses were search optimization crazy. That's where you go into Google and you say, hey, we want, to, you know, we want our ad to show up every time they put in uh, bakery. And every time they type in bakery in our city, we want our website to appear. That's search optimization. Many of you probably know that. Um, the, the, here's the thing with the internet. The internet has evolved into something that is a support to a primary form of advertising. It is the way people get to it, but not many people. Now, people use search, don't get me wrong, search engines do work, but they don't really reinforce. Those are people who are ready to shop. Advertising at its foundation is about presenting something and sparking an interest within a person who falls within your demographics, who falls within your targeted client base, that's true advertising. Search is great because, let me just be blunt, a search engine is just a glorified version of 411. We've always had that. We've always been able to pay. I remember they didn't even have business listings. Nowadays you can call 411 and say, I'm looking for a barbecue restaurant in Plano, Texas and they'll tell you by category. Okay. Well, I used to wish they did that, so I would say, I'm looking for Plano Barbecue, hoping there'd be a business by that name. We don't have Plano Barbecue, but we have, you know, Chris and Pitt's Barbecue in Plano. Oh, I'll take it, you know? So search on the internet is a glorified, and it's really good, way for people looking for your business to find your business. But there's a whole world of people out there who need a nudge, who need an introduction, who need to be presented with what it is you do. Uh, you know how many radio spots I've heard in Southern California say, trying to talk people into the fact that they have an ugly smile. <laughs> Every time this radio commercial comes on, they're not saying, hey, we're the company for all you people looking to get your teeth fixed with the super whitening service. Uh-uh. If they did that, that's just search. You know, everybody looking for whitening service goes to the search. No, they said, are you tired of people looking at you funny because your teeth are ugly? You know how ugly you are? You know how bad that looks? You know what an embarrassment that is? Well, for if you can afford a car payment, you can afford to get your teeth. That's advertising, believe it or not. It's having someone go, gosh, my teeth are really ugly. <laughs> and saying, I, I want this service. Advertising is not the same as search. And what America's television network does is advertise, present, and then we pull people to the search. We get them interacting. 
Time Warner is big on this. I've got some statistics from them that talk about the viewers and the subscribers on Time Warner, the system that we're on, these people are multitasking while they're watching television. That is incredible news for the local business and for you, the viewer. It means that while people are watching television, they're also doing things on the internet. And when you tell them, go to this website, they immediately engage. That is a great statistic, and it's something that's literally happening, uh, specifically with these higher-end, what we call middle-class and upper-middle-class households, where people are saying, hey, that's cool, and then they engage. And that's exactly what America's Television Network does. We are here building something that puts the power of mass media in the hands of the little guy. I, I have no problem saying, I promise you, you know, no, we're not Jimmy Fallon. You want to run on Jimmy Fallon? It's going to cost you tens of thousands of dollars. Advertising works because you take whatever pool you have. Jimmy Fallon, he's got a pool that's just enormous, right? Even locally in Los Angeles or Chicago or New York City, he's got a large audience in there. So you're going to pay the big bucks for the large pool. Well, a lot of local businesses don't need the large pool, and others are reaching one area when they want to reach more areas. So what America's Television Network does is precisely how home shopping has made billions of dollars. Home shopping doesn't care what the ratings are. You know how many people I go to say, I never watch home shopping. I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised that more people I talk to don't watch home shopping than watch it. But guess what? Home shopping's laughing all the way to the bank because they don't care about the people that aren't watching. Sure, they'd like more to watch, but they know these are the facts that someone is watching. And it's the someone that is watching that makes up the pool of their universe that generates the sales. So when people look at advertising and say, well, you know, Jimmy Fallon or, you know, the, the ABC affiliate, all fantastic. But the key to advertising is not reaching a lot of people once or twice or a few times. The key to advertising is reaching whatever pool you have many times. That's what makes it work. It works because you're not just sitting there going, eh, eh. No, you're tick tock, tick tock, constantly presenting the message, constantly re uh, presenting the message. And that's how you transfer viewers into buyers and shoppers. So what we do is we say, first of all, we know our audience. We're not Jimmy Fallon, but we have a lot of people watching and we certainly will do more for you than one business card size ad every week, once a week in a newspaper. That's the truth. And I'm not here, I love advertising, so I don't care if you do newspaper, more power to you. I love it. I love when people stick with something. But if you want to break into television, if you are a local company trying to grow your national website, we can put you in 8.5 million cable households and another 8 million households on Roku. Are 8 million or 16 million watching? No, they're not. But tens of thousands of hundreds of thousands combined are watching this platform. And that is, we do more than if you run one little ad in 180,000 households in a newspaper that people aren't watching. Our, our viewership numbers compete with their mass circulation when you consider the whole network. So it's an incredible platform that no matter how much we grow, we will remain committed to the local entrepreneur. It is a way I always, when I did radio, I saw people that were struggling with the numbers of newspapers and I said, I'll make radio affordable for you and I did it. I talk to people now who understand budgets, small businesses and I say, I'll make TV affordable for you and I'll give you a campaign that will work and that's exactly what we do here at the little network that could America's television network. It's a great way to not come on the air with 30 seconds because what they will not tell you in advertising, Mr. Business Person, they'll never tell you this. Your 30 seconds spot is going to get lost next to a McDonald's spot. The viewer knows when they see the McDonald's spot 
they just kind of almost subconsciously take it in. And suddenly, the next day, they're driving by and they go, oh yeah, McDonald's has the two for one egg McMuffin special. And it works. You, the local business person, have to come on in 30 minutes, 30 seconds and say, please hear me. And then you have to tell them where you're located, what your website is, what your phone number is. McDonald's and Coca-Cola don't have to do that. They run a spot and they know you'll find them. But the local guy's got to spend a huge chunk of 30 seconds or 60 seconds begging people to write down information. People don't do that. People do not sit and go, oh, I love this business that's putting on a 30 second commercial and I'm gonna write everything down and call them. And so I talk to a lot of local people who have spent tens of thousands of dollars on 30 second TV spots and they're disappointed. Oh, they're on this network and that network, they're disappointed. What we do is provide a three to five minute vehicle that presents the business and is continually pushing people to either look on the internet or call or look at our internet and be connected with the business. Three to five minutes of a presentation versus a 30 second one shot deal where you got 30 seconds and you better darn well hope they're interested in what you're selling. So the vehicle, the platform, the distribution is remarkable and I'm terribly proud in a, in a right way of America's television network and the services we provide. We want to see the next Sam Walton emerge. We want to see the next J.C. Penney. And uh, it takes aggressive marketing. And by combining broadcast television with the internet, we're putting the power back in the hands of the, the person with vision. If you don't have vision, don't advertise with us. If you have a vision, you'll never, ever be disappointed. Well, I think that's going to wrap it up for us. My name is David Hare. You're watching America's Television Network live, raw, and uncut. I will see you all here tomorrow night. Have a great one, and remember, you matter. Bye-bye.